the hell are you doing? Hello, and welcome to the Shoot Reload Repeat <laughs> Podcast. My name is Calvin, a.k.a. Practicals Buck, and I am here today with my lovely co-host, Charles Underwood. I baited you on that one. I don't know how long you'd be quiet for. Ooh, that was good. So, uh, welcome to the show. We uh, have another episode for you guys. This will be episode 21, I think. So That's right. Hopefully everyone's having a good January. The hopefully, longest month of the year. Um, hopefully you have shot at least one match in the season. Um, since our last episode, we have both shot our first matches, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, maybe talk a little bit about our upcoming matches that we're going to be shooting. And this... I don't know what else kind of comes up, so. I got a comment to make. Okay, here we go. No, I got to That's later. Our <laughs> number one fan here in the 806, Mr. Big Hoss, he made the comment the other day. He said, sometimes you guys sound like two of the biggest rednecks I heard in my life. But I love you. Well, that's good. That's good. I like that feedback. Tell me, we'll leave a, leave a. Tell them to leave a review for us in uh, on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> we haven't got any more um, of those. I've checked. I guess we kind of pissed the people off that because we kind of talk smack to a couple of them. But you well, know, well, come on, man don't 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 be a snowflake. Just talk to us. We're good people. We, yeah, we might razz you a little bit, but that's what we do. That's what we do here at the Shoot with Other People podcast. So. Um, I've gotten good, good feedback from the podcast, and people have told me. So my my audio setup is a little bit different. I'm trying to make it a little bit better. So we'll see. I'm trying to add some razzle dazzle. Um, so I guess we can talk about our matches. You shot a match last Saturday. I shot a match this Sunday as we recorded on the 27th day of January. So why don't you talk about your first match back in the 2020 season? It wasn't one of my stellar matches. Uh, some reason I was shooting low left on all the steel. Not sure why. Well, I am. I haven't shot since November, and I haven't been following the host instructions about dry fire practice. But when I get back in town later this week, I will do that religiously. And, and I sent you. Helps. I sent you some drills to try, so you don't really don't have an excuse. I do not have an excuse. There is no no excuse for what I've done. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's okay, I forgive you. Thank you. But I'll get on it. But yeah, I had a good time. I I ran some ammo, had some pretty good shots, some goofy stages though. But and uh, I am joining <clears throat> the West Texas Practical Shooters. So met with those guys that Saturday morning and pulled the trigger on it. So I'm going to join. What is uh? What do you mean by goofy stages? They had one. Have you ever shot one called the wedge? The wedge? The wedge. What it is, they've got the fences put up in about, I don't know, 33 and a half, 40 degree angles. And you have all these targets, but you can only see some of them in a certain spot when you're going across. It's not one of those where you can set up in two places and hit them all. Well, you, I, I had two mics on that one, to be honest with you. It's just because I thought I shot one of them twice, but it's just because I couldn't see it. But, oh, is uh, it kind of like a memory stage? I don't No, not really. You just had these real tight windows, and you had to, you could only see so many of them at a certain time. When could, you're, you when see, you're going could you see the same targets in the same, in different windows? Yes, but you couldn't shoot them. Well, no. Let me rephrase that. You know, of course, you got the the clear fence. You could see them, but you could not see them through your gun port that you were having to use. Does that make sense? Yes. And you couldn't be up next to the fence. That was the other thing. You know, where some of us John Wayne it and stick the gun out between it and go to shooting them. You couldn't do that. This one, you were back about four feet. I'll try to look it up and I'll send it to you. But yeah, that was that was an interesting. That was the first one I started off on, and uh, but yeah, it was fun. There were some interesting ones. The guys really worked hard on it. They also said that they're working on some other ones 
coming up uh, where you have to actually lay prone to shoot them. Oh man, laying prone. I did. I had to shoot prone at um, Area Fifty Nine, and it's it's pretty hard, man. And you had to lay prone and shoot not one target but two targets, and they weren't next to each other, so you had to like shift. You had to shoot, and then you had to like shift over. Wow. But that's cool. Um, I, sometimes memory stages suck because, you know, you can really easily shoot the same target twice and waste time or just, like, you know, completely miss a target. At Area 59, they had kind of like a memory stage where um, it was just a row of tuxedo targets. Um, and you could see – so basically there was three on, on each on the outside, and then there were some in the middle. And so basically what I did was I just shot the three on each outside, and then I knew exactly – where I could shoot the other ones from and I didn't have a miss on it, but it, it was just kind of makes you really think. Let me tell you the bonehead move on the qualifier. You had three targets. You had to shoot each target six times. Uh, you had to draw, shoot the first target, reholster, draw, shoot the second target, reload and shoot the third target. Okay, you could only shoot each one six times. Well, I'm trucking along and thinking, and on the last target, I only shot it five times. So I almost, I couldn't remember if I shot it five or six, like the Dirty Harry deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I nearly I nearly threw another shot at it, so I decided not to. Well, the penalty's the same either way, if I shot it seven times or if I didn't shoot it, correct? Yeah, yeah, because it's Virginia count. Yeah, so I should have just threw a shot at it, but... Oh, well, I had fun. I went through a lot of ammo. Like I said, all of the ammo issues I had are solved. Uh, I ran a bunch of that stuff that you reloaded uh, Christmas. It, it runs good. good. Yeah. Good. No no pistol malfunctions. Only thing I had was a screw fell out of my holster, and I found it next to a rock and put it all back together. So life is good in 806 land. I think we need to get you a Red Hill Tactical holster. That's what I, I was looking while I was patiently waiting on this podcast to begin. I was on their website <laughs> looking. Well, use code Buck10, save yourself 10%. Right on. Um, I shot my first match yesterday. So first match back to limited. Um, a big goal for me this match was just to go and have fun. I kind of tend to put a lot of pressure on myself and have expectations. And then, of course, those expectations get crushed because they're unrealistic, you know. So um, really, my goal was to go and have fun, which I did. I shot with a couple of uh, buddies of mine. I shot with my buddy Adam, who I shoot with often and regular. He uh, also shoots limited. Um, that iron sight didn't turn off, did it? No. It's, it's, so that's funny is I kept telling Adam. I kept Because every, every time after I would unload and show clear, after I would um, shoot, I would always turn my dot off. Or when I go back to load mads, I always would turn my dot off. And... I'd be walking back and think, oh, crap, did I turn my dot off? And I'd reach down. I'd be like, oh, I don't have a dot anymore. Um, <laughs> I think that's why I'm really excited about shooting limited is like I think there's always that in the back of my mind, that little bit of stress with the red dot. And, you know, I was shooting with the Vortex, and Vortex makes good optics, but I've had them dial me. Not that one time in the match, and you know, I've had a couple dial me. So I guess it's just kind of like a, a constant fear that I've always had that it's just going to dial me and I won't be able to finish the match or – Last time it died on me, I had to use my... Performance issues, right? Yeah. So uh, I do have... I sent that dot off, and they sent me a brand new one. So I do have a a Vortex red dot. If you're interested, shoot me a a DM, and we can talk. But um, it was a really good match. Another one of my things I tried to do is... uh, So if you're not familiar, Steve Anderson, he also also has a shooting podcast... Um, I'm a big fan of his podcast. Um, I've been shooting some of his dry fire drills. And his thing, um, he has a thing called match mode, where basically, like, you stay in match mode, you stay focused. Um, the way he, uh, he has you approach a stage plan is, is simple. It's um, analyze, strategize, memorize, visualize. So I, I did that for each of the stages, and I think it really helped me, you know, running through my stage plans. Um, it Rivers- almost got you on that one stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happened on one of these stages is there was some rear movement, in, like in this box, and a lot of people, what a lot of people were doing is they weren't drawing till they got out of the box because you know you can you can turn and run faster than you know trying to keep that gun up range. So this guy had a 2011 um, and like a race holster, and so he had unlocked it, and I had asked him, 
afterwards, like what happened. And when he was practicing, when he was walking through, he was grabbing the gun and running with it because that was his plan. Because that way, as soon as he turned that corner, he could get the gun out. Well, he unlocked his holster and he turned and he ran and his gun fell out and he kind of kicked his gun. Well, unbeknownst to me, I was a shooter after him. I'm standing there with my eyes closed with my air gun, my right hand. And I'm visualizing the stage, and it gets really quiet. And I look up, and there's a 2011 on the ground, kind of pointed in my direction. And uh, so maybe when I visualize, I'll go stand off to the side or something by the safe table. Cause yeah, I go to your safe place. I told Adam, I said, man, that sure would have sucked. To, um, the last thing I visualized is my, my crappy stage plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, But it was a good is match. Is Adam shooting with us? Yes. So – Yes, Adam is shooting with us. It was a good. It's a good match. Um, it's going to be fun. Limited is going to be a lot of fun. I really like having the Magwell. Uh, I got. I think I placed tenth in limited out of thirty shooters, and I kind of had a lot of mistakes. I had twelve mics on the on the entire day, which is a lot. Um, four of those, three of those came from the classifier because on the weekend I didn't have a very good side picture, and I just kind of pulled the trigger anyway. But. I really like shooting limited, and I did um, the math. I did, I, of course, you know, practice course competitor, and I, I. But I didn't take my mics away. I just changed my, um, like so my same performance. If I had shot major, I would have only placed one place up. So I think I can be competitive with minor, at least at the local level. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, Adam's shooting that match. We are shooting the River City shootout in March. It is March twenty first and twenty second. Me. You, Adam, um, Alter Performance, Joe Kennedy is also shooting that match with us. So it's going to be a fun squad. Like, there's one other guy that's on Limited. I don't know who he is. Um, I've never seen his name before, but everybody else is people that we're going to know. So it's going to be pretty fun. Good. So I'm excited. It's going to be kind of like a level two match, basically. In the seven, I mean, not, not as many stages, but it'll be like a level two match. So. And but we'll has, have the bear with us too. Oh, is he he's coming too. He's trying. Oh, good. He can carry our crap. No, no, we got the war wagon. He can pull it. Sweet. I got a lot of compliments off of my brass bucket on my wagon. Yeah, your your ball sack brass bucket. Yeah. I need to pick up more brass while we're there. But yeah, so I think limited will be a a good a good way to go. Um. One thing I wanted to talk about today was a little like calling your shots. And I don't know if you've noticed this with your, with your new ammo and that, uh, and you know, your new guide rod and stuff. Do you know what I, what I'm talking about when I say call your shots? Please explain. So calling your shots is not like saying, okay, I hit the target. It's like seeing your sights lift and, you know, knowing if it was a good shot. So for example, if I'm shooting like a, a 25 yard target, when or no, that's pretty far. Let's say a 15 yard target. When I, you know, pull the trigger, squeeze the trigger, and the shots go off. If my sights lift and they are off the A zone and the C zone or off the target, I can call that shot and know they have a miss or have a Charlie, right? So, um, one thing I that I think helping shooting the dot has really helped me is being able to call my shots because there are a lot of the stages I was able to see my that red little fiber optic dot lift up. And go back and lift up and go back. And the bullets went where I put them. Now, whether they, they were in the dirt or in the alpha, I could I was calling my shots. And so that's one thing when you shoot your next match there, lovely co-host, maybe try to be like conscious of seeing, is seeing your sights lift and return. Um, I'll, I'll pay attention to that because there were several on the ones I was shooting that – I wasn't quite positive on one of the shots, so I threw another one at it. And then uh, a lot of those, I had three alphas, but I just wasn't wasn't confident in that one shot. You know, the first one was really right on. I think the second one, I was starting to move, and that's why I just threw a third one at it, too. I think, uh, and if you shoot factory ammo, you won't be able to call your shots because that ammo is just too hot. Like, you and I are shooting like 130 grain, 130, 30 power um, you know, ammo, it's like a hundred, it's like 800, 900 feet per second, maybe a thousand. So if you're shooting like, you know, white box, 115 green stuff, you're not going to be able to call your shots. I mean, that's what I was telling Adam because Adam shoots, 
you know, he shoots, he doesn't reload yet, and he shoots factory ammo. And I said, dude, it's going to be, uh, that's like one thing that's tough. I think another thing that's really helped is I got a tungsten guide rod for Christmas. And that has added some weight to my gun, and I think that's helped too. So, because my, my gun doesn't lift as much. So, and if you have a crappy grip with your support hand, you won't, you won't be able to tell it as well because your gun's going to move around a little bit more. But that's just something that I've noticed and I've I, I tried to work on is, is seeing my sights and calling my shots. One thing I noticed since I've been reloading and not running your uncle's loads that I used up, when you get through shooting, your hands aren't black. Well, yeah, you had to put 17 grains of powder to get those black bullets, those uh, 95 grain bullets to work. And I mean, yeah, like that ammo, like a 95 grain bullet, that ammo was hot, but you had to load it that way or else it wouldn't run, as no. we learned at the Hose Fest, right? Well, I had to go uh, 4.3 to get it to run. Wow. Which I guess is not too bad. Well, I've had, I've made hotter. Yeah, you were like at 16, some, like 6, right? Like 6.5 or something like that? Yeah, 6.8 was the max. But that's just something that, that too, that I'm trying to work on at the, at stages, like I, on stages and at, and at matches is seeing my sights on every target. And part of that visualization is, you know, doing that. Because I feel like when I go to stages, when I go to matches, I say, okay, I want to be top five in limited today well i can't really control that you know because right. if you know five gm show up at the match well i might be able to beat them one day but i'm not going to beat them tomorrow you know so i think you got to find a way to define success diff in different ways and things that you can control so if you say okay for this match i want to call every shot now does that mean shoot a clean match no because you might call a shot, but you could be wrong, you know, or um, I've kind of given up on having a clean, a clean, a clean match, like shooting a penalty free match. Cause it's, this is not going to happen. Like no one's ever shot a perfect match before. So I don't know. What do you think about that? I think, you know, cause like you said, you can't control who you're shooting with. And all of that, I think you just always like I like I'm always just trying to to improve. Yeah, on mechanics, on speed, stuff like that. This last match, the score sheet didn't show it, but and also to have fun. I mean, if you're not having fun, don't go out there. That's that's the other part, you know. Be safe, but have fun. And that was my biggest deal. It just felt good to to run the gun since I hadn't ran it since November. You know. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. Like I just want to. I I did better because I was just relaxed and I had fun. Now twelve mics is a lot, so that that's not a good thing. But I I know why I had those mics. I just didn't call my shots. Like on one stage, a couple of the steel. I I you know had to take a couple makeup shots on steel, and so therefore I let emotion get involved. I started to speed up, and when I sped up, I made more mistakes. Exactly. So, same thing happened to me when I choked on the steel on that one we had a lot of steel and i had i had a tiny meltdown inside my head but once that once that was over i was cool reloaded my mags ready for the next one what's funny though is on that stage um my but one of my buddies mike or sorry chris he was like hey man that was a great run and i was like thanks but I, but like on the inside i could tell that i like you know on the inside i felt like my hair is on fire, but I guess on the outside, like watching the video, everything looked cool, calm, and collected. Like a lot of my runs yesterday, they were like Instagram runs, um, fast time, decent time, and just lacking a little bit on the hits. And that's just gonna take a little bit of time with the iron side. So I'm I'm happy with with my performance yesterday. So good. And I like shooting iron sights. I forgot how much I liked shooting iron sights. Now shooting the shooting the dot was fun, but I think. The iron sights just present a like another a whole another challenge. So, what? I mean, shooting iron sights is more challenging than I think shooting the dot is. Oh well, yeah, it's not a crutch. Yeah, so I think it's it's fun. Oh my god! And then also, you think about it, you're not carrying a dot when you carry one around with you all the time. 
That's true, I guess. That's that's the other thing I look at, you know. But I mean, the people that want to shoot the dot and all that, man, power to them. Have fun. But like I said, I don't have to put batteries in mine. Yeah, the dot has made me a little bit. It's helped with my speed, like my sight, like I like seeing things faster. So, if you do shoot it, it's not going to hurt you going back to irons. I don't think. So. Nah. I think you can be ambidextrous with it. Yeah. So. Um, there's one more thing I want to talk about. I don't know if you saw it. I sent it to you on Instagram. So MBX, they make like 2011 magazines. They are coming out. With, they are coming out with Glock mags. What are your thoughts about that? I think it'll be good. I, what are they priced at? Are going to be priced at? I don't know. I was trying to look, look that up. They're not going to be available for like another week. Um, let me see. Let me find out what a 2011 mag costs, and I, and I we can maybe we can probably guesstimate. Na 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 na. Okay, we need sound effects. Yeah, I know. 2011 mag for MBX costs $130. <laughs> so I would imagine that. The and Glock you're going to throw it in the dirt? Yeah, I would think that a Glock mag would probably be about the same. I would imagine. So, yeah, I, I was talking to a couple guys at the match about that yesterday. Like, eh, that's cool, but it's kind of, to me, it's kind of pricey. I am going to order me some uh, weights. Some base pads? Yes. You What kind are you going to order? Oh, I don't know. Do you have a suggestion? Well, if you're going to buy some base pads for your Glock or any other pistol. I suggest you going to canearms.com and checking out their wide selection of products. I run Cane Arms on mine. My buddy Adam got some for Christmas. Um, his wife bought him some kind of crazy colors, like lime green and uh, yellow or something like that, or pink. Or Is he something. shooting PCC now, too? No, 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 no. But um, <laughs> he, he put his, and he loved his. So Cane Arms, if you go and buy some, use code BUCK10 at checkout and save yourself 10%. I like mine. Um, the only thing with a Glock is you're going to have to put a um, like 10% power spring in there, plus 10% power spring, or else it won't work. I mean, they'll work, but you'll just have a lot of issues. It'd be like shooting a 2011 mag, so. What's funny, I had to shake my gun a couple of times to get the empty one to come out. Yeah, I and you're running those Korean mags, right? I, I was running all Glock mags this year, this week. They should fit on the Korean mags. But, yeah, it's nice because that little bit of weight on the bottom um, will help them fall out a little freer. And then, uh, of course, it ups your capacity to, like, so where you're 17, I can fit 22 rounds. 22, 22 rounds all the way full in my – magazine so if you know if you top one off at the start you're starting off with 23 so that's pretty good i like it um i like them a lot they you know they're 3d printed so they're affordable i think they're like 15 bucks a piece and if you use the discount code it'll save buck 10 it'll save you a little bit of money um easy to put on so check them out go go buy some i need to buy me a couple extra just to have a couple extra one of my the very first ones I ever had. It's kind of nasty and broken. So, and they'll customize them. Like I got numbers put on mine, and I don't think it's much more expensive. Um, I had numbers like imprinted on the bottom of mine. So go check them out. They're pretty good stuff. Can they do your initials on them? They can do whatever you want him to do. Oh man, I just did my. Uh, I just did numbers on the bottom of mine because I didn't have my mags numbered. Like one, two, three, four. So that way I know what mags go where, and if I have problems with them, I know which mag it was. So, but yeah, go check that stuff out. Is there a topic you would like to discuss? Let's see. We talked about our shoots. We talked about our upcoming shoots. We're ordering jerseys. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. So we are going to order our jerseys from Exports Outdoors. Um, we both submitted. We both submitted requests. I have already got a like a, a payment thing from mine because uh, Devin's already working on mine because Devin's my boy. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll email him tomorrow and I'll have him check on yours. Don't worry. I don't want you to feel left out. Um, so, guys, 
Exports Outdoors, they, um, Devin, if you guys have listened, been listening to the podcast, Devin Hijik, also also known as Two Alpha Zero Down, he has kind of jo- jumped into this venture of creating jerseys. So Exports Outdoors has been making outdoor products and jerseys and stuff. So Devin is working over there now, and their jerseys, man, they're like they're pretty cheap. I think. Let me check the website. I don't want to lie on the podcast. You know. I think, I think the, pretty- the jersey itself starts out like it's sixty five. Yeah, the, the, it's the like, plain jersey. It's like, I don't, but I don't. It doesn't cost anything to customize it. Like I think you can add as many, as many things as you want for like, uh, like as many logos as stuff. Because I know sometimes on other jersey companies. Like uh, Techwear, they charge you money for that. So, like, I'm just looking at their jerseys. I think it's, like, $65 for one, which is freaking cheap, man. $65 for a jersey. Um, A big thing about them is they are all about, like, everything's made in the United States. It's made in Texas. Texas they have about made. 10 to 14 days turnaround. So, if you've ever bought a jersey from Techwear, I bought my Rudy jersey from Techwear. And... uh it took like almost a month for me to get it. So that's pretty sweet that you can uh, get it like in 10 days. And they do rush services too. So like, you know, if you need it like tomorrow or the, not tomorrow, but pretty sooner than normal, they'll they'll do that. I'm also order, ordering one of their arm gaiters, like a pair of them, because I like wearing the sleeves while I shoot. And uh, I'm getting the cool, the ones I, I'm getting are like the black they're black and they're like diamond plated. It's gonna look pretty sweet. It's gonna look sweet. So go follow go follow him on Instagram. I know um, Devin is, was pretty busy at Shot Show, and your jersey your jersey is pretty cool too. Yours is the I used a different design, but yours yours is gonna be pretty cool too. So go check them out. Go order yourself a couple of jerseys and support them. They also have a contingency program. Or like if you put the exports logo, if you win money at level twos and above, they'll they'll give you money. So that's pretty cool. This is a good program. I can't wait to get mine. Stay by, stand by for pictures when we get them. Yeah, hopefully I can get it ordered this week, and uh, hopefully it'll be here with it before my next match in February. So I would like to be able to wear it. It's kind of weird. I want to be able to get my jersey made and jersey on. So awesome. But yeah. And then so, we can take a, a group picture in March. Yeah. You, you've seen um, my jersey. I, I think I put your jersey on my story too. Maybe when we get our mock ups, our final mock ups, I'll, I'll put a picture of our mock ups on Instagram so y'all can see them. Because they'll like mock everything up for you and they'll email it to you and then you pay for it and you're good to go. So we're putting the podcast logo on there. Um, one of my. My buddy Run DVC out there in the wasteland desert area of Las Vegas is going to run one of our podcast logos on his jersey. He asked me if we could do it, so I let him. I'm going to let him get some free advertising off that. So um, we're also Where making. Is he at? He's out in Vegas. He shoots with bullets and beer. Oh, okay. and all that. He um, he was also a former Rudy guy too. So, but he's um he's a good guy. He's really nice. He really supports the podcast and he messaged me on Instagram and said, Hey man, I would love to support the podcast and put your logo on my jersey. And I was like, Go ahead, man. So we're, also on, get, dude. we're getting some stickers made, maybe some cornhole decals, maybe some <laughs> other cool stuff. So you know, may, I would like to get some stickers made before maybe before that match in March and we can pass them out. So if you see us at a match. In February, after February, let me know. I might have some stickers. I can give you a sticker. So, and I'll send you some stickers as well. And we do sign autographs. Yeah, we will sign autographs for our nominal fee. Free. Oh, I'll do it for nine millimeter brass. You pick up my brass, I'll sign your stuff. You know, professional. You know, I was the only range chicken out there week before last. I didn't pick up any brass until the end. I made Adam help me pick up some brass at the end, like on the last stage, because everybody was already cleared off of it. It was a little short stage to clean up, and we just picked up like you know, a few handfuls, and that was it. So, all right. Well, I don't. 
I don't really have anything else to talk about. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we, we leave this thing? Before I talk, plug our sponsors one more time? I'm good, buddy. All right. Well, um, let's just talk about our sponsors. So first sponsor I would like to mention is Red Hill Tactical. Red Hill Tactical makes some of the best or the best holsters, mag pouches that you can buy, custom holsters. Um, I post pictures of my holster all the time because I love it. It's beautiful. Hopefully we can get uh, the lovely co-host one. Maybe we can get you one that says the lovely co-host. That would be sweet. Or we I'm can thinking put, about putting that on the back of my jersey. Or the podcast logo on your thing would be cool too. True. True. So they have awesome stuff, man. Go check them out. Use code BUCK10. Save yourself some moolah at checkout. Um, Can Arms we talked about earlier. Awesome 3D printed. They don't. They, they make more than just base pads for um, pistols. They make base pads for AR-15s. They make mag couplers. They make all kinds of AR-15 accessories, grips, all that kind of stuff. So go on over there. Get you some yourself some 3d printed goodness use code ssr10 ssr10 for shoot or srr10 sorry srr10 shoot reload repeat podcast Ugh, it's been a rough day srr10 save yourself 10 percent over there and then finally extant labs um great company i love their cleaning products um i don't ever clean my guns between matches or even between practice sessions. So the night before a match, when I clean up my gun, the brake contact cleans up my Glock barrel, cleans everything up real nice. And that Echo 25 keeps my gun nice and lube. So go over to their website, extantlabs.com, and use code BUCK10 to save yourself 10% as well. So, uh, oh, um, let's go check them out, guys. Support the people that support us here on the podcast. And, you know, go buy some stuff and get, let us know what you think. Yes. And all of the uh, – if you go to my, my Facebook page or my Instagram page, all of the codes are there in my bio underneath in my highlights. And then in, in every show notes, I've been posting the discount codes as well with websites. So that way you guys can go check them out. So thanks. Uh, that's, that's all I got, man. Well, the 74 days of January are nearly over. So Yeah, hopefully – They'll end soon because I'm ready for a new month. Yeah, January is a very long time. So you guys, make sure that you keep practicing, keep shooting. Thank you guys for listening. Um, check us out on Instagram. My Instagram is Practical as Buck. The lovely co-host Instagram is C31Leatherwood. On Facebook, make sure you search for Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast and like the Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast page. I also have a Practical as Buck page, but I'm starting to phase that out because all my Instagram, my Practical as Buck Instagram posts to the Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast on Facebook. So if you liked my page, Practical as Buck, make sure you go like the Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast because I'm probably going to delete that page very soon. So uh, go follow us there. Follow our socials. Leave us a five-star review. Comment. Share us with a friend, man. So thanks, guys, for listening. Have a good evening. And shoot fast and don't suck.